I'm Mr Pock and this is question 7 on the OCR Core 2 paper from June 2014. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. The cubic polynomial f of x is defined by f of x equals 12 minus 22x plus 9x squared minus x cubed. In part 1 we need to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus 2. To answer this question we're going to use the remainder theorem. And that says that if we substitute into f of x whatever makes this bracket 0, so in this case minus 2, the answer that we get will be the remainder when you divide by x plus 2. So we are going to do f of negative 2. And all that means is wherever we see an x, we're going to substitute in negative 2. So we get 12 minus 22 times negative 2 plus 9 times negative 2 squared minus negative 2 cubed. Let's simplify this a bit. We've got the 12, and we're going to subtract 22 times negative 2. That means we're going to subtract negative 44, which is the same as adding 44. For the third term, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Multiply that by 9, we get 36. And the final term, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So if we subtract negative 8, that's like adding 8. And if we do 12 plus 44 plus 36 plus 8, we end up with 100. So the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus 2 is 100. In part 2 we need to show that 3 minus x is a factor of f of x. This time we're going to use the factor theorem. And that means if we substitute in for x whatever makes this bracket 0, then if it's a factor the answer should be 0 as well. So we're going to substitute in 3 because 3 subtract 3 is 0. So we're trying to find f of 3. So this time we get 12 minus 22 times 3 plus 9 times 3 squared minus 3 cubed. So here we get 12 subtract 66. 3 squared is 9. Multiply that by 9 we get plus 81. And 3 cubed is 27 so we're subtracting 27. And if we do 12 take 66 plus 81 minus 27 we end up with 0. So we've shown that 3 minus x is a factor of f of x. In part 3, we need to express f of x as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic factor. Since we know that 3 minus x is a factor from the previous parts, we can rewrite f of x in terms of 3 minus x multiplied by some quadratic which we haven't found yet. I'm going to show you two methods to answer this question. One method is polynomial long division and the other method is equating coefficients. Now obviously in the exam you just choose one of these methods, but you should really be familiar with both as both has its own merit in different circumstances. So we'll start with polynomial long division. If we know that 3 minus x is a factor of this, then if we divide our original f of x by 3 minus x, the answer will be this quadratic that we're trying to find. So we can set up a long division with 3 minus x on the outside and then f of x on the inside. And the first thing we need to do is see how many times 3 minus x goes into negative x cubed. So what we're looking for for this first term is something that we could multiply 3 minus x by to get negative x cubed. So I'm going to focus on the minus x here and I need to multiply that by x squared to get to negative x cubed. So that's going to be part of my answer up here. We're going to have an x squared. But if we actually did 3 minus x times x squared, we'd get a little bit extra that we need to deal with as well. So when we do the minus x times x squared, that's going to give us the negative x cubed here. But we've also got to do 3 times x squared, which gives us 3x squared. Next, we're going to subtract the part we've just got from our original polynomial. So if I do negative x cubed and I subtract negative x cubed, that's going to give me 0. For the second term, I've got 9x squared, subtract 3x squared, that gives me 6x squared. And then I'm just going to drop down the other two terms that we haven't used yet. So we've got minus 22x plus 12 here. Next, we're going to see how many times 3 minus x goes into 6x squared. Well, if we want to get from negative x to 6x squared, I'm going to need to multiply by 6 and also by x to get the x squared. And it's going to be negative because this term is negative and this one's positive. So we're going to get negative 6x. As with the last term, we're now going to multiply this 3 minus x by the 6x. Negative x times negative 6x gives me 6x squared, as I would expect, because this part's going to become 0. And 3 times negative 6x gives me negative 18x. 
Once again, we're going to subtract the bottom line from the top line. 6x squared minus 6x squared gives me 0. Negative 22 subtracts negative 18 is like adding 18 back on, gets us to negative 4x. Drop the 12 down to the next row, and we've got negative 4x plus 12. This time we need to think about what we need to multiply negative x by to get negative 4x, and the answer to that is 4. So we get a plus 4 up here. Multiplying the 3 minus x by 4, minus x times 4 is minus 4x, and 3 times 4 is 12. And if we take negative 4x plus 12 and subtract negative 4x plus 12, we're going to get 0. So the quadratic I would get by dividing f of x by 3 minus x is x squared minus 6x plus 4. So for our final answer, we could write that f of x equals 3 minus x and then x squared minus 6x plus 4. I'm going to show you a second method using equating coefficients. You may prefer this method or you may prefer the polynomial long division one. I'm going to start with the line up here where we've written f of x in terms of 3 minus x and a quadratic. And what I'm going to do is expand out the right hand side. So first of all, I'm going to look for any terms that give me an x cubed. The only way I can get an x cubed is by doing the negative x multiplied by the ax squared. So that gives me negative ax cubed. Next up, I'm going to think about any x squared terms. There's two ways I can get an x squared term. One way is multiplying 3 by ax squared. That gives me 3ax squared. And the other way is by multiplying the negative x by the bx. So I get 3 lots of a, subtract b, multiplied by x squared. I've factorised this in one step here. For the terms that just involve an x, I've got 3 lots of bx, so that will be 3b, subtract minus x times c. So that gives me 3b minus cx. Finally, the constant term on its own, I get that by doing 3 multiplied by c, so I've got a plus 3c on the end. The next step is where we equate the coefficients, and all that means is where we have an x cubed on this side, the coefficient must be the same as where we've got an x cubed on this side. So for the x cubed terms here, we've got negative 1x cubed, and on this side, we've got negative a. So that tells us that a must be 1. Next, I'm going to think about the constant term on either side. On the left, I've got 12, and on the right, I've got positive 3c. That tells me that 3c equals 12. Dividing through by 3 gives me c equals 4. So I've got my value for a and my value for c. Next, I'm going to look at the x squared terms. On the left-hand side, I've got 9x squared. On the right-hand side, I've got 3a minus b. So I can say that 3a minus b equals 9. But I know the value for a, that's just 1. So 3a just becomes 3. So I get 3 minus b equals 9. Rearranging that, I would find that b equals negative 6. And if you look at these coefficients here, you'll notice they're the same as the coefficients here. a is 1, so we've got 1x squared. b is negative 6, negative 6x. c equals 4, plus 4. The x term then, we don't really need to do it, but it's useful to do it just to check that we get the correct answer. That gives us a bit more confidence in our answer. So for the x's here, I've got negative 22 on this side and 3b minus c on this side. So I can say 3b minus c equals negative 22. Substituting my values for b and c, I get 3 times negative 6, that's negative 18, subtract 4, and that does equal negative 22. That can give me a bit more confidence that my answer down here is correct. Part 4 says hence solve the equation f of x equals 0, giving each root in simplified third form where appropriate. So let's start with what we found from the last question. This is what we got when we factorised it into a linear and a quadratic factor. So straight away, we know that one solution to this equation is when this bracket is 0. And for that to be true, x has to be 3. So we can say one solution is x equals 3. But we need to check whether there are any more solutions from this quadratic over here. And to solve this, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, because in the question it says giving each root in simplified third form. That implies it would be very difficult to factorise it. So my value for a is 1, my value for b is negative 6, and my value for c is 4. 
Now I could just substitute those into the quadratic formula, but I'm going to work out the discriminant first to break it up a little bit. So b squared is negative 6 squared, and I'm going to subtract 4 times 1 times 4. Negative 6 squared is 36, and I'm going to subtract 16, that gives me 20. So I can say that x equals minus b, well b is minus 6, so that ends up being positive 6, plus or minus the square root of 20, all divided by 2a, which is just 2. But remember, it says simplified third form, so I need to simplify this root 20. Well, I can rewrite root 20 as root 4 times root 5, and root 4 is just 2, so this becomes 2 root 5. So writing in the simplified version of root 20, I get 6 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2, and then dividing everything by 2, I get 3 plus or minus root 5. So I've got three solutions, x equals 3, x equals 3 plus root 5, and x equals 3 subtract root 5.